Hello and welcome to the Boys Upstairs Show. This is the Week Four NFL Show. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, as you can see, I've got a new. Oh, never mind. There's something on the fucking screen. Sorry. All right. As you can see, we've got a new setup here. Uh, my current apartment has a podcast room that was just constructed. So shout out them. We're here. It's week four. Andy Dalton's best quarterback in the NFL. For the first time in over 70 years, the biggest underdog in each of the first three weeks has won outright. Patriots in week one, Raiders in week two, and the Commanders this past week on Monday Night Football. This week, it is the Patriots again against 49ers. They're 10 and a half point dogs. Don't know about that one winning outright, maybe covering. But another little thing that I thought was worth mentioning here was fading the public this season has been the way to go. This is the worst time to be betting with the public since 2003. They are not hitting very well. So fade the public, but don't fade us. Game one on the slate is Vikings at Packers. Packers are minus two and a half. Total is 43 and a half. It is a one o'clock start. Right now, Jordan Love is not officially in or out. He is practicing, but he's day to day. We will give it to Cope. The Packers, you know, sorry. The Packers, they've really been fucking with people's heads recently. I will be going with the Green Bay Packers. Malik Willis, not unfortunately, but surprisingly has shown he can actually make a lot of plays with his legs. He gets out of some crazy problems in the pocket or scrambling outside the pocket. He makes big runs down the field and he's thrown a little bit. Like it's getting better every week. He's thrown the first week. It was, he threw like a hundred yards. And then this past week he threw for 200, uh, around 200. He threw some nice balls. So he's showing that he's slowly, but surely another product of Matt LaFleur's genius play play calling. Uh, the Packers defense also has been on an insane tear. They had, I think like seven interceptions this year, and that's as many as they had all of last season. So they're cooking defensively, Jair, everything, the pass rush, it's all coming together. And although I am super on the Sam Darnold hype train, I kind of think that, yes, this is Sam Darnold. And it's been just a little too long since he's thrown three or four interceptions and a half. (laughs) And the Packers who have been heating up with interceptions, I feel like this might be the game where he... He, he struggles a little bit. So I'm going to take the Packers. Malik Willis has looked good, and I think it's going to be a good matchup. And historically, in the last couple of years at least, when the Packers have looked good, the Vikings have come in and played spoiler a lot. Uh, they always play really tight games. The NFC North as a division in general normally all play very good games against each other. So it's a fun ma- it's a fun division to watch, especially when rivals are matching up in there. So I think it's going to be close, and I'm going to go with the Vikings plus two and a half here. I think that with – even though I gave Malik Willis his flowers, I think the defense of Minnesota and Brian Flores is not to be trifled with, and they're very smartly coached. Um, And I think Malik Willis has kind of throughout the last couple weeks been able to keep defenses guessing whether he's going to use his legs – well, there's going to use his arm and kind of, as you know, the Packers always got have guys open down the field. I still don't know how, but it just always happens. I think Flores is going to throw a bunch of blitzes at him, kind of do a lot of the disguises, make sure he's not able to run at will and freely and kind of keep him locked up there, force him to throw the ball deep a little bit. And they've always got a solid defense guys out there making plays. So I don't think it's going to be too high scoring either. I also think in terms of the Vikings offense, Kevin O'Connell, man, he got Sam Darnold and has Sam Darnold looking like Peyton Manning right now. It's it's pretty incredible what they're doing, especially with – I can't even name their second-best receiver that's playing because I don't think Addison played last, last week uh, without Justin Jefferson. Hawkins, who? Jalen Naylor. Naylor, exactly. Jalen Naylor has scored a touchdown in every single game this year. Jalen Naylor. That's insane, right? And that's a credit to the scheme, credit to the coaches, credit to Sam Darnold, credit to all of them for making that happen. Both teams look very good through the first for the through the first three weeks of the season. Um, at this point, it's I, it can kind of be a crapshoot. It's in Lando Field, L- Lando Lambo Field, and Packers normally play well at home. But like I said, the Vikings are always down to play spoiler. Um, 
divisional matchups always tend to be low, especially in the NFC North uh, with these two teams. So we're going to go the under. I think the Vikings can come away and pull up, pull out a sneaker here. I thought it was a little bit um, inconsiderate of Tommy to just open up the show by saying that Andy Dalton was the best quarterback in the NFL <laughs> because he must not have watched a Vikings game this year. I miss that. <laughs> I uh, I, it was it was a ridiculous comment anyway. So I don't know. Maybe there's some asbestos in the new podcast room at his place, but whatever it may be, uh, he must not have watched a Vikings game this year. Uh, comping Sam Darnold to Peyton Manning, like done. That that that, that that's exactly what it is. So you, like he's not playing astronaut. He, he's playing Peyton Manning style football. Uh, he has his Reggie Wayne, which is which is Justin Jefferson. He has his Joseph Adai, which is Aaron Jones. Like that offense is clicking. Uh, and I, you know, the Packers are definitely a formidable opponent. Like they're a lot better than people thought, even with their QB mishaps, but it, it, it does start with that defense. Um, and I think I, I'm definitely playing the over here and I think I'm giving the nod to the Vikings spread. Uh, I'm looking forward to just, you know, one of these beautiful NFC North ma- matchups, uh, that just kind of turns into a shootout, whether it's love, whether it's Willis don't know how much that truly factors into the decision. Um, but I don't know. Sam Darnold is just way too hot right now, and I don't know if the Packers are going to be the ones to cool him off. Uh, I agree that we're definitely due for a little, you know, shit the sheets moment from him. But as of right now, he's too hot to handle, and I'm going to ride that wave until I can. So give me the Vikings in the over. Uh, I have seen the Vikings in the top three in pretty much everybody's power rankings for some reason, so they must be good. I haven't watched one game, but I picked them to beat the Packers, so. Very insightful. Great analysis. Uh, yeah, it's it's fucking hurricaning up here. So uh, I went ahead and picked the Packers here. Um, I know the Vikings are hot right now. I know Sam Dardo looks like an MVP candidate. And the Vikings defense led by Coach Flores looks absolutely just – it looks great. It looks great. The scheme is great. Um, but if anybody is able to pull through with – Whoever I, I I honestly think whoever plays quarterback for the Packers, they're going to end up winning the game. Malik Willis or Jordan Love. It looks like it's going to be Jordan Love, but uh, I picked the Packers um, because uh, I think that the uh, hot streak of the Vikings is due for a little simmer down. I don't think that necessarily that they're a fluke, but I do think that they're due for a game where you know they don't perform up to the standard that they have been performing up to. And the Packers have been kind of just steadily, you know, whoever you put in front of them, they're going to go out and do exactly what they need to do to win that game. So I think we're going to see more of that from Packers. And I took them minus two and a half. All right. Well, unfortunately, the fire alarm is going off in my building right now. I just gassed up how nice it is to have a podcast room. But we're going to fight through it, going to power through like champions do. So in this game, I'm taking the Vikings. I think that this game is a great example of how quarterbacks could be bad in one place and good in another place. Sam Darnold, bad in Carolina, bad with the Jets. Apparently the best quarterback in the NFL with the Minnesota Vikings. Malik Willis, potentially the biggest quarterback bust of all time with the Tennessee Titans, and now he's won two games in a row with the Packers. So I'm going to take the Vikings because I think that the Vikings defense is going to be able to shut down either Malik Willis who I think is due for a loss, or Jordan Love, who is hurt. So the Vikings are the first defense to have five-plus sacks in their first three games since 2001. Flores, like Nixon said, is legit, and I think that they're going to be able to get to Malik Willis slash Jordan Love, and I'm going to take the Vikings plus two and a half here. Like, I forget who said it, Cobe, Sam. The fact that they're dogs in this game is insane to me. I know it's in Green Bay, but still. Um, I am also going to take Josh Jacobs anytime touchdown because he has not scored a rushing touchdown this season yet. It is plus money and he is due. And I also just traded for him in fantasy. Shout out Nixon. So I am going to take him to have a rushing touchdown in this game. All that right. was great business, Tommy, our trade. That was great business. That was great business. It didn't work out for either of us. this. Past yeah, I didn't. Mike, Mike, Mike Evans had a shit week. So did Josh Jacobs. But yeah, as I fix my Josh glasses. Jacobs, Josh Jacobs really hasn't scored yet. Not one <laughs> rushing touchdown all year. Wow. But he's put up he's put up some points though. He has. I'm not sure if he has a receiving touchdown. That was when he was not on my team, but I I, I checked, don't think so. I checked the data. He does not have a rushing touchdown. That's unfortunate. Good. 
But he will this week. He will this week because it's plus money and it's on your card. Exactly. Game two on the slate here. Seahawks going to Detroit. It is a Monday night football matchup. Total is 46 and a half. We will give it to Sam. As everyone knows, I say it every week. I'm not the biggest Lions fan. I think they are, I wouldn't say overrated, but just not the cream of the crop like everyone says they are and have nothing to show for any success that they've had other than losing or blowing a lead in the NFC Championship game. That being said, the Seahawks, led by Mike McDonald, wow. What a start to the season has that been for them? I mean, it's pretty incredible. No one thought that – everyone thought they were going to be a bottom, bottom feeder rebuilding team this year. Everyone was ready to give McDonald some leash and be like, oh, okay, he doesn't have that much to work with, whatever. What do you know? They're 3-0. Uh, it's week three or it's week four, whatever. But still, hey, you are what your record says you are. Um, the Lions haven't looked ter- – haven't looked – like world beating, but have done their jobs and look solid. This is a tough one to pick. Three and a half seems like a way too tight spread, especially you play this game last year and it's like, wow. Although you got to remember the Seahawks played the Lions earlier in the year last year as well. And the Seahawks came in and beat them in a very high scoring game. Uh, three and a half, two and a half, three and a half are always tough spreads. It's going to be tough to touch the total on this one, considering the Seahawks data alert are leading the league in yards per attempt allowed for defense with 4.7. Uh, this defense is playing very well. They have a couple picks, and if I'm reading this right, have only given up one passing touchdown so far. The Lions are going to have to get creative here. Could be, you know, a sneaky playoff team again, like they have been ever since they got Geno Smith. Shout out that guy. But I think the Seahawks keep this one close. I don't know if they win. But I think uh, we're going to come down to – and this is Monday night, I believe. And I think we're going to have Joe Buck calling this one on the last minute, and it'll be a fun one. So, Seahawks plus three and a half. I have some other data to share. Yeah. Uh, I'm not touching either side in this game. Uh, but I'm going to take the under. And the reason for that is neither defense this season has allowed more than 20 points. Neither team has scored more than 26 points. So, if you put those two numbers together, 26 plus 20, you got 46. Over-unders at 46 and a half. I would like to expect that this line is probably going to move up. Last two times this team played, uh, Seahawks won two years ago, 48 to 45. And the year before that, it was 37 to 31. So absolute classics the, these past two times these teams have played. They more, they've more been known for their offenses. And, I mean, this year, it's a lot of the same. It's a lot of the same guys. Um, you, you know, Gibbs Montgomery duo is still rocking and rolling in Detroit, uh, and the consortium of wide receivers that the Seahawks are so fortunate to, to have, uh, have, have, have just not scored that many points. I mean, DK is good for like another hundred yards a game. Shout out to my fantasy team, but whatever. Uh, I think that this game goes under it's a prime time game. A lot of pressure on, uh, a lot of pressure on them to perform. I'm not going to pick a side. It should be a good one, but yeah, give me the under here. The Lions get a lot of credit for their offense over the past few years, which they deserve. But after the first three weeks, you know, you can't keep giving them, oh, well, last year they were a top offense. Oh, two years ago, they were the number one offense. It's not those years anymore. So their offense might have regressed. Maybe they've been figured out a little bit. It, it just they haven't been what people have been expecting. And you can't keep riding on what was last year. So I'm going to take the under and also the Seahawks. Their offense, although they have so many pieces on that offense, it just hasn't come together. Hopefully, Kenneth Walker can return this this week. But uh, Zach Charbonnet's been playing pretty well. DK's been playing pretty well, as Martin mentioned. But hasn't led in a lot of yards. Not that many points has come from it. Uh, I think that this game seems normally like it would be an over. So I, I think it goes under. And I'm also taking the Lions. I think although the Lions aren't as explosive as they once were, they are still 100% due. Seahawks are a fake 3-0. and So I think the Lions can cover 3.5, and, and I'm going with the under. Um, Shout out to my other minorities. I'm going to agree with both of them, actually, because I'm going to go ahead and take the Lions. And are we, the count, are we well. counting the Jews as minorities? I mean, <laughs> they're like, they're something. Less than one percent of the popu- less than one percent of the population, greater than twenty five percent of the Nobel Prize winners. Depends depends where we're talking minorities here. Shout the out gin- my yarmulkes, man. Shout the out gingers the yarmulkes. are definitely point zero zero one of the population. So, but what happens if you get a ginger Jew? I know a few of them. It that's that's a deadly combo. 
That I mean, yeah, that's extremely rare. I've never... Is the fire alarm still going off, dude? Yeah, that, that, there might actually be a real fire. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's you're going, going down with the ship. Time. You're going down with the ship. Yeah, the I will. Firefighters run. aren't going to be happy with you. Well, uh, shout out to Tommy for uh, staying during a fire. But <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm going to take the lines here. I think that uh, just like what Kobe said, honestly, like the Seahawks are three and zero. And I love Mike McDonald as a coach. As you guys know, he was the DC for the Ravens last year, who was a great DC. He's a great, he's he's a great coach. Uh should be my head coach right now, honestly, but I digress. And uh, but I, I'm gonna go ahead and take the Lions. I think they're more talented. Seahawks, as we've already stated, have haven't haven't played the best, you know, teams so far this year. This is kind of gonna be their first test going on the road, playing in Detroit, uh in, in prime time. So and uh I think the under as well. I think uh the Seahawks defense it has some answers for what the Lions have been doing. And uh, as it's already been stated, the Lions kind of don't look as explosive as they have in years past. So I'm expecting a little bit of a lower scoring game. Uh yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take the um I'm gonna go ahead and take the under as well. I hate to say that the Seahawks are a fraudulent 3 and 0 team because to be 3 and 0 in the NFL is indeed hard but to Kobe's point they did play the third stringer for the Dolphins, Patriots, Broncos. So those might be the worst three teams in the league right now where we sit. I think Laporta for the Lions is hurt which is a big loss for them but I still think the Lions are going to pull it out. Um yeah. All right, well, literally, as Sean just finished, the fire alarm turned off, so that is great news. Um, I have some more data that I have brought. Jared Goff is 4-7 and seven against the spread versus the Seattle Seahawks in his NFL career. That is his worst against the spread record against any team in the NFL. However, conflicting data, Jared Goff has not lost a home game at night since 2019. So, for that reason... And also because of what Martin said, the last time, the last three times these teams have played, it has been over and two of them being in the 80s. I'm going to take the over here, 46 and a half. I think that this will be a high scoring game. I don't want to touch the spread just because I don't know who's going to cover. I don't know who's going to win. I think the Seahawks are probably going to lose just because of the fact that they're due for a loss. But I don't want to put that on my card because maybe they're good. I don't know yet. They beat the Lions. Everybody's opinions about the Seahawks will change. So I'm just going to take the over 46 and a half here. Hey, it's time for the best part of the show. It's time for the locks of the week. Last week I had the Saints um, covering the Eagles. Uh, Eagles won on a last uh, second drive to win the game and ruined my bet. Um, but nevertheless, they hung in there with, Top dog Eagles. Um, so I'm gonna run it back again with them this week. They are playing the Falcons, um, uh, who look pretty shaky. Um, and uh so I'm gonna take the points and ride with the Saints. I'm going to talk about that same exact game, the Falcons and the Saints, but I am taking the under of 42. Now, I made the mistake of picking the Falcons over last week, and it came back to bite me in the ass. And after really watching their offense, I think that what I thought was true, but, you know, I saw a lot about how the Falcons are going to be this team this year. Their offense is brand new. You know, all this stuff that's supposed to make them great. But I think we learned that although Bijan Robinson is going to run for a good amount of yards, I don't think that Drake London, Darnell Mooney, and Ray Ray McLeod is Ray Ray McLeod is the receiving tandem that a lot of them, a lot of people made it to seem. And so far in their three games this year, they've put up 10, 22 on a last second touchdown. If they didn't do that, they would have had 15 if Saquon caught the ball. And they put up 17 last week. They they are struggling to put up 20. I think. Kirk is maybe losing a step coming off the injury. I don't know if Drake London's a number one. I don't know if they're two and three receivers or two and three receivers. Everyone knows what they say about divisional unders. Divisional unders are normally the move. This under is set at 42. That's surprisingly low for the Saints who have been hot and the Falcons. So to me, that just shows people are like, why is this so low? It's because Vegas knows and I know divisional under Falcons offense just isn't what people were making it out to be. Somehow they tried to make it seem like they had weapons when they have the same thing they've had every year. And the Saints had their two fun weeks. They're not the same. So the under a 42. I'm going to get a lot of hate for this one. Uh, problem is that Mo is not on the show to defend his team uh, because I mean, what we happened said, last we said it. 
we said it last week. He came two weeks in a row, and he may never come again. Yeah, that's as that's as much you can expect from him. And and I went on the show the one of the weeks that he was on, and I picked the Giants against the Commies. We were very close to to making a gentleman's wager. Thank God uh, he didn't lift my offer on that because uh, I would have lost. Um, Giants probably should have won that game. I don't know why Dabble didn't have a backup kicker planned, and their rookie number one overall pick fucking dropped an easy catch. Uh, I wouldn't have caught it, but whatever. Here's my here's my pick. Um, I don't know if you guys have looked at NFL Twitter, NFL media these past couple of days. You guys would think that Jaden Daniels just got elected president. Okay. Did this guy have one of the utmost, you know, most talented, perfect, uh, almost flawless rookie performances of all time? He absolutely did. What was he? 21 to 23, making smart throws, making plays with his legs, making plays in the air, that deep ball to Terry McLaurin to ice the game. Was 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 legendary. Like, like if I was a Washington Commanders fan, I would have all of the fucking momentum for the rest of the season. And a lot of my friends do who that live in the DC area. It's another road game for them. They were just in Cincinnati. They're going straight to Arizona. Okay. Cardinals are, I think they're one and two. They're probably the best, if not one of the best, one and two teams out there. To take it from a guy who's a fan of a one and two team in the Indianapolis Colts, and they're dog shit. Maybe, maybe uh, Ravens. Maybe Ravens. Bears. Oh, Ravens are okay. So, so the Cardinals was second best one and two team. That that okay. Thank you, thank you for that reminder. Um, these two teams played last year. The Commanders won twenty to sixteen. Two completely different teams. That was Josh Dobbs versus Sam Howell, not Kyler Murray versus Jaden Daniels. You still have the same weapons, pretty much. Plus, you have a a, a very healthy and adamant um, wide receiver and and Marvin Harrison Jr. has been making a lot of plays. Trey McBride is hurt. Uh, I don't really know if this game's going to go over or under. Thank God this is just a lock of the week, and I only have to pick one. But I'm taking the Cardinals minus three here. I think the 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 Commanders had their – I'm not calling it a Super Bowl because I think they're going to have a good year, but just like all of the momentum is going that way. I'm sure a lot of the money uh, is going to be betting on them in the public. And, Tommy, what did you say to open the show? Fucking fade the public, baby. So give me Cardinals minus three here. I like it. All right. Well, I hate to follow Martin here with this pick. Not that it really affects Martin because I feel like it doesn't, but you're shaking the commanders, aren't you? No, I'm not. Mm-hmm. It's it's more of a personal level. Although I'm not Steelers, he's gonna take the Steelers. I'm not taking the Steelers. I'll just I'll uh, say that right away. But I am touching that game. Big Tony Anthony Richardson is the only starting quarterback in the NFL this season through three weeks that has a completion percentage below 50%. Um that's that's pretty fucking bad. I'm not gonna lie. Shit. But, through three weeks of football, he's a 49% completion percentage. He stinks. Uh, and to to add on to that, the Steelers' defense is the best defense in the NFL. They are first in yards allowed at 229 per game. They are. Is this first. another Steelers under? It is another Steelers under. Wow. I'm going back to the well because it probably is the best bet in football. They are also first in average points allowed per game at just 8.7 points per game allowed. That's fucking insane. They allow less than nine points per game allowed. So I'm taking the under 40 and a half here. This is the first time in two weeks that the Steelers total is above 40. It's basically 40, but I'm taking the under 40 and a half here because I do think that this game is going to be both teams below 20 points. And I I hope Steelers win, but I'm not going to put that on my card. I'm just taking the under here. I I went ahead and took the Eagles. Bucks looked absolutely awful last week against the Broncos. They look terrible. I bet on them. I lost like 50 bucks. It pissed me off. So I'm going to go ahead and bet against them this week. They're on the road again. They're in Tampa. But we just saw, again, the Broncos go into Tampa and whoop on them. So I, I expect the, the Eagles to to do the same thing. So I'm going to take them uh, minus two and a half, I believe they are. And, uh, yeah, it's just as simple as that. I'm surprised no one touched this. And – from what I just saw on my phone, I'm going against this the script or Tommy's script here of fading the public. And you said it before that something sad about like the biggest underdog of the week is always winning. The Chargers are plus eight and a half right now against the Kansas City Chiefs at home. That doesn't really matter for the Chargers because SoFi is like playing a neutral site. With the way the Chargers have started this season, they're a tough ball club to play against. And while the Chiefs are three and out. And going for a three P on the Super Bowl, they're not a team that's coming in and blowing everybody out right now. But I don't see a world where they go in on Sunday afternoon and go and just take down the Chargers. 
and I, it's very cliche going around right now that Harbaugh's team is different. I mean, boy, if he doesn't have his team up and ready to play for that game, that's I don't think Harbaugh's going to sleep for the rest of this week in preparation of that game. And eight and a half, as I've said ever since I've been on the show, eight and a half is a lot of points. That is a lot of points in the National Football League. I don't know. I don't see the Chargers rolling over and losing this game. I could see the I could see the Chargers honestly winning it. They are missing Derwin James for a couple hits to the head, and it's kind of ironic that Derwin James is suspended and Rashi Rice is going to play next week. I don't think the Chiefs are going to come here and blow out the Chargers. I just don't think it's possible. So um, lock of the week, put the chains on it, Chargers plus eight and a half. Both starting tackles, Rashawn Slater and Joe Wall, are hurt. I don't know if they're playing this week. Justin Herbert's hurt. I assume he'll play this week. But And Joey Bosa. Oh, fuck. I forgot about Herbert. He better be playing. Justin Herbert and Joey Bosa also got hurt. So, I like, yeah, I I don't know what their all status is. I know that Justin Herbert's day-to-day. He probably will play, but he'll be hurt. So, thanks for being here. Like and subscribe. Tell if your, you don't like and subscribe, I'm going to fucking come and kill somebody. Yeah, if you don't like and subscribe, it, like, especially after I just went through my first take and, like, maybe I don't remember if it was my second take as well with the fucking fire alarm going off. I could have died for this program. Literally. You he would have. Our fearless he leader could have died. And you died. guys are sitting here and not liking and subscribing. I mean, it's it's disgusting. He exactly. would have died, though. Like, 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 like emphasis on he would have. He was going to die for this could program. Have. I put my life on the line for this program. So if you don't like and subscribe, that's on you. But You basically killed Tommy if you don't like and subscribe. Exactly. Tell your friends. Yeah. Blood's on your hands.